Hey everyone, it's Game Dev with Drew. Did you know that 57% of you guys are not subscribed to my channel? Make sure to subscribe so you can watch my content in the future. Thank you so much for 33 subscribers, guys. I hope after this video comes out, it'll be even more, and let's hopefully hit that 100 subscribers in the next couple weeks or months. So, today we are going to be working on our enemy. So, without further ado, let's get straight into it. Let's create a new scene, other node, and make it an area 2D. You guys remember making an area 2D? We made that with our bullet. Our area 2D uh, works with contact and all that stuff. So we're going to, within our area 2D, we're going to put in a sprite. And for that sprite, we'll be using the texture that I have been using forever. And a texture that looks like a really good enemy, I feel like a snake would be a pretty good enemy for this. So remember, we're going to go into region, enable region, press texture region, scroll down. This snake looking pretty sick, but I feel like we should make this snake a different color, don't you? So let's make him a different color. We will now visibility, modulate and modulate it to a darker green which looks much better much better so we need to give this area 2d a collision now so we'll give them a collision shape 2d and go into a shape make a new rectangle shape perfect we now have an enemy but our enemy doesn't really do anything so let's fix that by putting in a script. New script, enemy.gd, and we will put this into our scripts folder. Open that, create. Delete all that. Make two variables that we export so that we can move things faster, and two variables that decide where we're going and where we're coming from. So, Let's first export a variable for speed, just to see how fast our thing will go. So we'll just do 20,000. Seems pretty pretty good. And we'll export another variable to move uh, distance. And right now we'll just make our move distance 200. That's just 200 pixels, don't worry. We'll now make an on ready variable, so that on runtime we can mo we can make it more modular for different characters for different enemies so we're gonna make an on ready variable uh start uh x so we're just gonna make it its start value and it's just gonna be its own position dot x next we'll make an on ready var for our target uh x so that's where we're going to be moving and that's just our uh position dot x plus our move distance so we're going to start out with making our own function, a move move to x function. So let's just call it that, function underscore move underscore to underscore x. And then we're going to pass in three variables, our current position, our, move, our um, new position, and how many steps it takes to get there. So let's just define that. Let's do, uh, let's make a new variable. So var new equals current position. That's all we need to do. If, and we're just gonna say, if new goes to is, goes to new position, if new is, if new is less than, new position we're going to new plus equals step so we're just gonna we're just gonna keep on stepping new plus equals steps we're just gonna keep on stepping forward or backward so now that we will make our character go plus steps let's make our character go backwards so if new is less than uh, new position then we're going to make new 
equal to new position. And now I don't really like else statements, but we're going to do an else statement. Else, we're going to do new minus equals steps. And then if new is less than new position, then we'll make new equals new position. That's a lot of news, isn't it? Uh, I forgot to put in a colon right there, and then we'll do that. And then at the end of all this else statements and stuff like that, we're just going to return new to our character. We're just going to return new. So that's really all you need to do to make our character move around. So now that we have that down, we actually have to process our character to move in a sort of direction. So we're going to do func underscore process, which is just, instead of a physics process, it's just processing every single frame. We don't need to do physics process. You can, but there's no reason to. It, it just takes up more data. So with func underscore process, we're going to make our position dot x equals our move to x new function. And we're going to input our new uh, var var variables. We're going to input part. We're going to input our new values. So we're going to do position dot x, and then our target x, and then we're for the steps. We're just going to do our speed times delta, and then we have to do a little bit more. If our position dot x equals equals target x and then again and if target x equals equals our start x then we're going to have to make our target x equivalent to our position dot x plus our move distance and then we'll put in an else statement, which makes it more like um, target x equals start x. So the reason why we're doing this is because we, we want our character to move back and forth, not just uh, back. So when we make it to our final position, we're going to stop, and then it the new target x becomes the start x, and the last start x becomes the target x. I'll just show you how it works. So we'll go into our main scene and drag in our enemy. Our enemy looks small, so we will make our enemy look bigger. And that's a nice slow enemy that you can easily do, that you can easily interact with. But there's nothing that our enemy does yet. So let's do something about that. Make it so that our character will die or otherwise known as reset the game when our uh, enemy touches our character. So we'll go into our player scene and make an entirely new function. Funk, and we'll just call it die. And basically all it's going to do is just get underscore tree, and then it's going to reload the tree, and it's going to reload the current scene. And that's all what happens when, it, when you die. So we're going to get the current tree of our nodes, and we're just going to reload the current scene that we're in, which is main scene. The reason why we chose an area 2D is because area 2Ds are able to interact with things without making a collision. So we're going to make a new signal node, and then it's going to be we're going to make a we're going to make a new signal on body entered. So it's just going to be any node that enters our body on enemy body entered and connect that node. We'll now make the function for that. If the body dot name, if, if that body is named, um, what's our player character name? Yeah, if it, if it equals player, then we'll do body dot die. That's all you need to do. So now whenever we touch this character, it's going to reload the scene. Simple as that. When we shoot our enemy, we want it to die. So, how are we going to do that? 
Well, let's go to our bullet code. So let's open up bullets.scene and go into our code. And now let's make a new node for it and area entered area 2D on bullet entered area. If the area dot name equals equals enemy, then area dot Q underscore free. And perfect. So when we run the game and we shoot it, it goes. But we also want our bullet to, when it collides, to go as well. So we will also make our bullet Q underscore free. So when, they, when you shoot and they collide with each other, they both go away. And that's all you need to know for enemies and shooting enemies, as well as signals and collisions. Thank you all so much for watching. Let's hit that 50 subscribers soon, and I'll see you all into the next episode. Bye, everyone.